What's up, everybody? It's your boy Showtime Doctor here with your four, or not four star, lol. Six star! Just kidding. Your aim and guide video. Your aim and character examination. So let's get started. So, Eamon, turns out he's pretty good. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I think we all knew that. I heard about him like for weeks before uh, he even came out, so. Let's go over his kit real quick. So his leadership, increased light attack by 40. Kind of odd for a tank, but you know, you could I could see some synergies with that eventually. Uh, on his one, this is really important here, increases caster's evasion. Revelation Signet is passive, by the way, not his one. Increases caster's evasion by 40% and accuracy by 40%. And increases damage deal by all allies by 30% when the caster is imprinted with Revelation Signet. So pretty much this is separate from that. Uh, this is a group buff for 30% damage, and this is a self buff for evasion and accuracy 40%. That's pretty gnarly. Um, then on his 60, once you unlock it, has a high chance for the caster's turn to come more quickly at the start of the wave. That's exceptionally good. Activates resolve for an ally for one turn. If the ally takes fatal damage, restores the target's the target of resolves HP by 50% and increases their attack by 50% for two turns. That is nasty right there. So if you got someone like, say, a Morgan, you know, she she seems to get killed a lot. Before she berserks, she's going to get up, be regular, but go ahead and increase her attack by 50%. Increasing Morgan's attack by 50%, that amps her bleed damage, that amps her total damage, that amps everything, all the percentage stuff that she does. Everything she does is based on attack. And plenty of other heroes that fall early, you know, like Saya, Io, etc. That'll be really nasty right there. Really great uh, little thing there for your dungeons and your PvPs. So right here on his one, it's your typical, you know, 100%, 45% chance to taunt. 100% chance to imprint caster with Revelation Signet, so he basically self-buffs himself with the evasion and accuracy. And he also gives the team damage. So that's really nice. 100% chance to cast that. Once you level it up, base damage goes up. Taunt goes up to two turns from one turn, and it gets up to 65%. So that's pretty much like an Electra thing right there on those percentages. Uh, right here on his two, his two is probably his bread and butter skill right here. So pay attention. Four turn cooldown, sign of destruction, inflicts damage equal to 80% to all enemies. 40% chance to taunt the target for two turns. 100% chance to grant all allies counterattack one time for two turns. 100% chance to imprint the caster with Revelation Signet. So once again, that's a self buff slash team buff for Revelation Signet. You got a 100% chance on his one and his two to have it up. So pretty much, you build him with some counter, it's going to be up like the greater majority of the time. Unless there's a ruby in PvP or you're fighting like Shadow Sid in the Sid dungeon. Uh, so keep in mind, this is kind of hard in the weeds here. So you're inflicting damage to everybody, but you only have a chance to taunt one is how I read this, but possibly you can taunt everything. I, I'm assuming it's single target, whoever you taunt, or target rather. 100% uh, chance to grant allies guaranteed counterattack one time for two turns. I have seen that that... Uh, someone told me that there was a bug in one of the YouTube videos where if, if uh, Eamon dodges an attack or... One of the people with the guaranteed counter dodges the attack. Uh, the buff stays up. Even though they counter, which I haven't tested it for myself. It might just be, you know, misinterpretation, misunderstanding. But, you know, let me know if you guys see that or not. And then Revelation Signet. So once you skill this up, you know, the top percentage goes up. The base damage goes up. Nothing else goes up. But eventually you can get it to 70% chance to taunt. So that's pretty gnarly. Now on his three, pay attention to this one too. Inflicts penetration damage equal to 180 of attack to one enemy, casts Engraving of Destruction for two turns. Inflicts damage equal to 180% of attack to two enemies adjacent, so a cone effect basically. But only if it's a 50% chance to cast Engraving of Destruction for two turns. So pretty much, Engraving of Destruction inflicts damage equal to 100% of max HP when skill three is used. So if this debuff is on a character and they use their skill three, they're pretty much going to kill themselves unless they have like an able shield or some type of mechanic where they're going to absorb the damage. Not sure about uh, something like a demo shield, like an evasion thing. I don't think that would work for it because it says penetration, but who knows. 
We'll out to see how that works. I'm gonna take him into PvP later on. He's not really ready for PvP, but we'll see if we can eke out a win there. Uh, so, you know, once you skill this up too, pay attention. You know, the base damage is going up on both skills, and then the percentage chance to cast Engraving of Destruction on the two adjacent enemies goes up until eventually it gets to 80%. 288% chance. And also, really easy thing to miss here, if you notice, skill cooldown goes to 6 when you get it maxed all the way. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just something there, something for that, because seven's a long time for a skill like this, and if you run them with someone like a Sid, that can give you some cooldown decrease. Maybe you can get this to four, depending on what's going on with your party. That's pretty gnarly. Uh, it has nothing to do with uh, Signet, so you use that, you pretty much have to, unless you get a multi-off or something, kiss Re Re Revelation Signet goodbye. So overall, this this guy is an amazing tank, really good. Now, some things before I get into runes and stuff, some things you need to start thinking about with him. Uh, PvP, you're gonna start seeing a lot of aimants, so you're gonna need to counter him. Uh, heavy counter against him, Ruby, because Ruby dispels 80% chance. Uh, attack and defense units, aimants a defense unit, so she'll get rid of that engraving. Also, uh, Ru, you know, self-explanatory, Ru can dispel. And, you know, basically any character that has a good chance to dispel. Uh, he's holy, so dark, you know, dark heroes that are gonna, like, one-shot him, there's not too many. You know I mean, because he's a tank and he's got that evasion and everything, one-shotting him's always gonna be pretty hard. So, if you guys can think of any, I can't think of any offhand. Ashley will do some good damage against him. But, pain, no. Um... Yeah, you know, other than like a decane or something, but even those guys, they can't really do it. Uh, and then another thing you guys are going to have to worry about is you're going to start seeing Amons if you yourself has, have an Amon. It's going to come down to who takes their turn first, because this is going to be working for both Amons. So you're going to have to think in PvP some attack speed on them, get them as much attack speed as possible, along with some good runes for them. You know, passive dodge if that floats your boat. Otherwise, uh, you know, your typical standard HP, defense, substats. Uh, some counters really good on him to help keep that buff up whenever he gets attacked because he has taunt. And, you know, maybe some multi. Like I was saying, when you use your three, a little multi will guarantee that you will hopefully get Revelation Signet up again, and then that'll be up. Uh, otherwise... You know, like, yeah, your typical stuff. Just health, defense, maybe some HP recovery if you're running PvE. I'll show you how I got mine right now. I'm gearing him up, up for PvE. He's got multi, I'll show you why. I, I, I probably need to get him a little bit more counter, but we'll get to that. Some HP recovery. Uh, as far as I, I want him to eventually run the Cali dungeon, so I'm going to have to get him to at least 4,600 defense and probably in the 190s. 19,000 range on health at least before I can even start thinking about that. <clears throat> uh, so here are my runes. You know, I went pretty heavy on the HP. And then the HP recovery. If I get a rune that has like a little more counter with some HP, maybe stick counter on one or two of those, I'll probably do that. That's godly for a slot 5 rune right there. That's pretty gnarly. And then multi strike, you know, for the offensive rune. I figure that'd be pretty good for him. Uh, your hero talents, you know, it's your typical tank stuff, guys. So by now, you, sh you guys should know if you've built a tank before. If you don't and you're new to the game or whatever, that's fine. Get defense increase. This right here doesn't make sense. On on skill 3 because, you know, he's got... Even though it's two turns, which is nice, it's a seven turn cooldown to start with. Six turns. If you're running a heavy cooldown reduction team, hey, consider it, but I mean, having defense on your tank, that just seems standard. Decreased damage from bosses, you're running PvP, you get that one. This one, it does reflect. I was thinking of a potential reflect build with two, because you are going to be taunting when you use his skill too. So if there's like some really heavy attackers there, eh, maybe, maybe you could think about running that. Uh, especially since his two's on a four-turn cooldown, run some cooldown reduction, get it down to three, probably. 
That was pretty gnarly. You see, I got screwed on my suppression roll. I actually had that at two early. I've been trying to get three. Suppression is what you go with on that slug because doing extra damage on your tank makes no sense. So let's try to get the three star. Reduce attack by 30%. It's sexy no matter what you're doing. Uh, comrade in arms. You know, your typical PvE stuff. Uh, de dealing additional damage. Not really going to do much for you in most cases. Supreme Shield. You know, get that damage immunity. Really good on stuff like Kali, etc. On everything that doesn't penetrate. Now, you can also go counterattack if you feel like doing a focused counterattack build. That's up to you. I like protection because... Or Supreme Shield, sorry. Because Supreme Shield's definitely saved my butt many times in like the Kali dungeon, etc. So, as you can see, I got them geared for PvE. Uh, purple Stars. I won't go over the Purple Stars too deep because it should be, you know, get your attack speed. Get your defense, get your HP and your abnormal status immunity, get your defense, HP recovery, same thing with that. And then right here, most people, they say to stop at five stars on most tanks. You can get that extra counter if you want. Uh, like I was saying earlier, the Sid dungeon is going to really trip them up because a lot of people are going to build them counter and counter in the Sid dungeon hurts because of that men mental seal or engulfing darkness as they call it in there. But also the thing that's going to hurt him too is, if you notice... Revelation Signet, one turn, one turn, no matter how much you skill these up, it's always going to be one turn. So unless you got somebody that like increases buff duration, which they're pretty few and far between, I think it's like SRs and Rs. Uh, yeah, you're gonna... Because Shadow Sid, when he hits you with the bird, even if he misses, he's reducing buff duration. So Shadow Sid's going to take that garbage right off and, you know, he'll be like your normal tank at that point. So, you know, stuff to think about. So, we're pretty much done with the showcase right now. So, I'm going to go ahead and take him in PvP. He's not PvP ready, you see. He doesn't have PvP talents. He doesn't have... Um, he doesn't have... Well, he's not as built up as I want him to be right now. As far as health and stats go but that's just the nature of the beast sometimes well, i'm gonna take them in anyways i haven't been using them uh we'll see what we get if we get a ruby and that's gonna be kind of tough and you see there's no purple stars yeah there's a ruby and a nyx damn this will be a little bit of a rough team but we should be able to beat it see how it goes and i'm really scared of that rue i'm gonna have to and melancholy because melancholy can wreck you but, let's see how it goes here. And unfortunately, guys, I can't turn my sound on because I would have to restart the app. I should have did that before I recorded the video. I completely forgot, so I apologize for that. Uh, that stupid new card unlock thing is in the way. That's the typical blue stack stuff. So right here, what I'm going to do, uh, normally Ruby's going to ult right off. So, quite honestly, I am going to put Engraving of Destruction on her. Normally I would do two, but since Ruby uh, ults right away typically, go ahead and hit her. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure it gets on her, because that's why I'm targeting her, even though it's going to probably miss Nyx. And also, I guess we'll turn on Visual Fix so we can see how it goes. On my end here. Alright, so you see she's ulting right there. I don't know why when she does this ult, she doesn't actually hit the person. She hits next to them. And she's dead. So you see how Engraving of Destruction works. That's pretty gnarly. So right there, Nyx is putting out some damage. I was kind of pissy. And so what I'm going to do... What should I do? I'm going to stun Rue. So I'm actually going to try to kill Nyx right off. Because Nyx could be very problematic if I let her go too long. Uh, yeah, I should turn. Sorry about that. Hold on. As sexy as you are, Morgan. As sexy as you are. So right now, tyo has got no stacks. So this probably isn't going to get Rue to her. Uh you call it a 
resolve. So right now what we're going to do is hit his skill 2. His skill 2 basically taunts the primary target and then it guarantees counterattack for the team and puts Revelation Signet up. So if it's going to taunt, you know, I want it to taunt somebody that's going to probably do a, a whole lot of uh, damage here. So we'll go ahead and go for the Ruby. But it's going to hit everybody, so... And it's going to guarantee counterattack. Oh, it did taunt multiple people, okay. It taunted Rune, it taunted... Okay, so I guess it can taunt everybody, so I was wrong about that, guys. I apologize. So what we're going to do now, um, you know, your standard stuff, just get Rue. Or not Rue, get Saya. Some uh, multi-damage there. You see that big evade? <laughs> I mean, I could, I could probably uh, resurrect him with Rue, because I don't think anti-revive went up, yeah, but... Still, it's always good to have your tank up, especially when he has zero purple stars. So right here, you know, I'm getting kind of sick of uh, this Morgan, so... I'm gonna go on her a bit. Hopefully didn't clean up the multi there, but that's okay. So we'll roll Saya back in. You know, Kane's already freaking got his shield up, so I'll just try to put him to sleep. Didn't work. So I'm not gonna, obviously I'm not gonna attack, because Kane's just gonna freaking counter. Luckily Kane didn't target Eamon, and even if he did, maybe Eamon dodges, maybe he doesn't. It's alright here, hopefully. Tayo pretty much clean this up. Of course, we can't actually get recovery there, but, oh no, he freaking got his shield. The good old Kane days are back, fam. The good old Kane days. Oh, Kane's gonna be ridiculous for a little bit. By the way, Tayo's banned next week. That's actually gonna wreck me, because I've got a lot of resources in the Tayo. Hopefully, he's not gonna be banned for guild battle, which is... Coming up in actually three minutes, so hopefully that'll be kind of fun to do. And there you go, guys. So there's your aim on showcase. So you saw he did pretty good there. You know, he tanked a good amount of damage. Saya was the main target just because she's squishy and there's dark heroes. But, you know, you saw immediately one of the ways you can handle Ruby now, Ruby's AI, because Aemon's probably going to be going first a lot of the time. So just get her to kill herself, like I did. And then even though she hard counters Aemon, if she's dead, you know, they got a rezzer, and then they're blowing their rezzes early if you're not stunning them, or you can't kill their healers right off. So that went pretty gnarly, man. That went pretty gnarly, so... I hope you guys got a greater appreciation for Tayo. Uh, let me know, you know, your experiences with... Or Tayo. Uh, for Aemon. Uh, let me know your experiences. Uh, synergies you guys are running. Some, uh, some things you're working on. What you're going to do, I'm definitely going to get him purple stars as soon as I'm done getting Sid. Uh, one more purple star, and then he's going to be next. It's either going to be him or Christian. Or not purple stars, sorry, skill ups. I'll get uh, Aemon purple stars no matter what. But skill ups, that's a choice. Actually, I don't even have an Aemon, so I guess i got to go with Christian. So there you have it. So, anyways, guys, hopefully that video uh, helped you out there. I am Showtime DR on Twitch. You can find me there, you can find me here in the, in the description. You can get a link to the Discord, come in, share your experiences, answer questions, show us how your farming's going. We got a good uh, KC community in there, we're all anime heads, so we got a bunch of anime stuff. We do anime watching parties on Sunday at 4, by the way, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can come in for that, we're going to do Roroni Kenshin, uh, OAV, so that should be lit. Uh, but back to my self-promotion crap, I forget. Yeah, whatever. So, I will catch you guys again. Peace out. Have a great day. Good luck to you in guild battle as well.